Eurozone finance ministers have a spring in their step as they gather in Cyprus for talks on the debt crisis. A series of events this week has seen market pressure ease. Spain, whose debt threatens the entire currency union, saw its 10-year borrowing costs drop from a dangerously high 7.64% in July to around 5.5%. That followed the European Central Bank's announcement that it could and would buy any amount of Spanish government bonds should Madrid apply for a bailout. Spain's finance minister Luis de Guindos gave little away when asked if he would seek financial assistance from the EU. In the next couple of days, we will make important announcements. That's the basic outline. What Spain needs to do is adjust its deficit, its public deficit, to the level we are committed to. Simon Tilford, chief economist among the analysts at the Centre for European Reform, says there are plenty of pitfalls still ahead. The ECB is certainly doing all it can, given the political constraints. But it needs to be remembered that the bond purchases will be conditional on countries signing up to bailout programmes, programmes of structural adjustment. Another obstacle was overcome this week when Germany's constitutional court approved the European Stability Mechanism, the Eurozone's permanent bailout fund, worth nearly $650 billion. The most that we can say at this point is that the building blocks are starting to fall into place. But even that could be over-egging it. ECB action is necessary, but so is a proper Eurozone banking union. So is some form of debt mutualisation. And, says Tilford, the Germans are still reluctant to take on the debt of southern Europe. With confidence in the entire European Union project shaken to its core by the crisis, there was relief from the Netherlands, where voters gave pro-EU parties a sweeping victory. André Kruvel is an associate professor at VU University in Amsterdam. People also know that... The Dutch cannot survive outside the European framework. It is, a, it is a large economy, but it's not an internal market. We're an export country. Still, there is little optimism in the eye of the debt storm in Greece. The European Union, European Central Bank and International Monetary Fund have a team in Athens trying to persuade Greece to stick to the timetable for spending cuts, which some members of the governing coalition are resisting. The EU IMF report on Greece is due out next month, and if it says Athens has fallen even farther behind in its austerity programme, analysts say the current market optimism likely will evaporate rapidly. Henry Ridgewell for VOA News, London.